Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. Welcome to episode 298, From Conflict to Connection, Expanding Your Tolerance for Differences. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. So glad to have you again this week. We're going to talk about expanding our emotional tolerance for differences. And I especially want to have this conversation with you all as we are in the heat of a very heightened and sensitive and feeling scary political time in America. And I have my opinions and thoughts and of course about the political races and I'm really not going to get into those during this podcast. However, I want to help you learn how to expand your own discomfort when you are faced with somebody that has different thoughts and belief systems than you do. And we have all sorts of areas in our lives where this shows up, right? The political arena is just sort of like the up and center one right now. If you're changing your relationship with alcohol, that can feel like you're going up against societal norms and you're different and you're doing something different than other people are. So you can get a lot of pushback and discomfort around that as well. There's differences in parenting, right? Like there's all sorts of ways that we can parent. And a lot of people have opinions about that, right? There's religious beliefs. I mean, we live in a very diverse country with a bunch of different religions, right? And we can feel so passionate about our specific religious beliefs that um, when other people present with their beliefs, it can be uncomfortable, right? Because we believe so hard in what we believe. And so it's really important for this episode, first of all, for you to keep an open mind, okay? And I'm going to help you expand your discomfort so that you can have more tolerance in your life for differences. And this is why I think this is important. When you are more comfortable with other people's differences, you will drink less alcohol, (laughs) okay? It actually helps you expand your emotional tolerance in just general life, right? Everybody is different. Everybody has the their own individual thoughts and freedoms to think however they want to think, right? And we live in this culture in America where we really value these um, ideals of being an American and having the freedom to share how we think and how we feel, and who we vote for, and all of those things, right? So of course, we're going to be faced, especially here, with people that come from all sorts of different backgrounds, upbringings, cultures, climates, religious beliefs, all of it, right? And their own personal experience, it's going to shape how they think and feel about things. And the more you can tolerate other people, and their thoughts and feelings, and belief systems, the more peace you will have. Okay, so bring it back to you. (laughs) It's not that we have to tolerate or accept, you know, things that we don't agree with or don't like. This is about making you feel better. And when you feel better in your life about other people's differences that are different than your own, you tend to do better. You have better relationships. You tend to not want to numb or escape your feelings. You can have more empathy and understanding of other people's ideals. And then we can have more of a connection with other people in our lives. And I think right now, the divisiveness that I see in our country around so many things, not just politically, is really sad. And of course, we all have different thoughts and beliefs around things. But I hope to create a space of openness and exploration you know, even with the offerings I have around helping you change your relationship with alcohol, it's not all or nothing. 
And so I want to open your minds to letting go of the all or nothing thinking around some of these big topics. You know, right now we're in the political race, let go of the all or nothing thinking around drinking. Like what if it doesn't have to be like that? What if you can respectfully focus on what's important for you and focus on you and your goals and also respect and peacefully look at other people's thoughts and opinions on this. Some people are very passionate, you know, a lot of thought leaders in the, in the alcohol space, like me, um, they're very passionate about it being, you got to quit drinking. That's the only way you're going to get over it. You got to quit drinking. You have to claim a life of sobriety. You have to go to AA. And I'm here to tell you, obviously you've been listening to this podcast that there are other ways of changing your relationship with alcohol. And when you soften those edges a little bit and you let go of the all or nothing, then your mind is open to other ideas, (laughs) right? And that's the same thing with any other bucket in our lives, such as parenting, religion, money, you know, look at all the stronghold beliefs people have around money, motherhood, right? Like all the rules, all these guidelines that we have and hold on to and enforce with rigidity around what being a mother looks like, what being a wife looks like, right? So take a deep breath, go on this journey with me during this podcast around expanding your tolerance for differences. And I actually did a little bit of research, especially on the pl- the political climate that we're in right now. So I, you know, just kind of did some reading on why, like when did we become a society that became scared of negative recourse when sharing personal beliefs, values, and decisions? This is my question, right? Like when did this start happening? And what I found very nicely was um, the shift that our culture in America, and probably just with this online culture, it's more of a cautious approach in sharing our personal beliefs and values and decisions. Um, It's been evolving over the past couple of decades, driven by a few things, the rise of social media, So platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, now X, these platforms have really amplified public discourse. And yes, there are good things. I connect with so many of you on social media, right? I use social media in my work. I get my my message out via social media. I've connected with thousands of people all over the world to social media. So there are so many good things about it. And It's an easy way for people to share opinions and thoughts and then come back and like throw back at you without having to have a face-to-face conversation, right? So we've developed this thing called cancel culture. We share something controversial or unpopular opinions, and then there's a risk that you could be canceled or people come out of the woodwork and come after you. I see this all the time with my own stuff, right? I run Facebook ads and you know, there's definitely trolls out there that come in after you. And that doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? Like I know how to handle it, (laughs) right? I, I have a thick skin around this stuff, but a lot of people don't. And so that prevents them from sharing because they're scared of that. A lot of this is based in fear. The other thing is this polarization in our politics and our society. So over the past decade, again, with the rise of more online platforms, which makes it easy people to comment and get involved and share their thoughts and opinions, political and social divisions have intensified globally. So this growing polarization and us putting ourselves in some echo chambers, right, um, it really helps. It, it's really encouraging this um separation, right? So we can share how we think and feel with people that we know that believe the same things as us, but step out of that sort of protective bubble. We don't because we're worried that um, we're going to get canceled or we're going to have some retribution. We're going to lose money in our businesses, all of that kind of stuff. And so we don't tend to do that. Um, Again, with the cancel culture and public shaming. So you know, like I just posted on my own personal Facebook page, my thoughts about things. And I actually really thought about that because I was worried that I would lose business. And the thing is, I don't want to take action in my personal life based on fear. I don't want to not do something because I'm scared of people coming after me or canceling me, right? Like that is a value of mine. 
I came out and shared with the world that I stopped drinking and shared my personal story of going through that work, right? And like I'm sharing deep stuff about my own journey in my relationship with alcohol. So I think that helps me. That helped me back then to not be scared of what people thought of me because it's like, what else, what do I have to lose at this point, right? Like I want to be somebody who is open and shares how I feel and think. That's very important to me because it's it's better for me and my mental health to just be who I am, right? But a lot of people are scared to do that. And there's just one thing I want to say about that. And we're going to get to this in the podcast in this episode around letting yourself be uncomfortable with other people's opinions. A lot of times when people get canceled or, you know, you as a consumer don't like the political beliefs that somebody else has, you're taking action to cut them off or to cancel them or to quit them or whatever it is from fear and from anger. And so we as a society need to learn how to feel our feelings, (laughs) right? There's always going to be things that piss us off, right? And, And if you can be with your feelings on that and let yourself take a minute and stop, notice, and process and really get yourself settled before you decide to do something, that is the best advice. Because remember when intelligence or when emotions are high, intelligence is low. So we don't generally make the best decisions when we're triggered and angry about what somebody else is doing or their beliefs, right? Like we're not going to bring people together when we're all just angry and reactive. We need to slow down. (laughs) We need to take a breath and be thoughtful about what we want to say, what we want to do, and not be reactive and defensive. And of course, that's easier said than done, but that's the challenge. We need to bring people together. We need to be open to having adult conversations here about anything, not just the political environment, environment, right? There's all sorts of conversations on social justice issues, right? Race, gender, equality, justice, like all of these things that so many people are passionate about. What would it be like? Just think about this. What would it be like to just talk about it without getting so upset and, and getting in fights and being divisive? Like, what would that be like? Is that even possible? (laughs) I think it is. I think with these types of conversations, which, you know, can be uncomfortable and the awareness that you can have by looking at your own feelings around things and just taking a beat to be with them and process your feelings and then coming to the table from a a more neutral stance, ready to listen, ready to understand where the other person is coming from so that you can learn more about that person and build a deeper connection. That is possible. I've done it. My clients have done it. My family has done it. My friends have done it. We need to be okay with discomfort. We need to learn how to be okay with our feelings, no matter what they are, and have civil conversations where you can bring people in and then both people, you can agree to disagree. You can have a friendship with people that don't have the same values as you. You know you can do that, right? And people don't need to be assholes. Okay. So like, I'm not talking about somebody hurting you, right. Or being mean to you or any of that stuff. I'm talking about good people here that are on both sides of any situation, parenting, politics, the alcohol conversations, religion, money, all of that, where they're good people with good intentions, but what gets in a way is our feelings. And when our feelings are activated, when something gets pushed up on us and we feel triggered, we get scared and we want to cut, right? This is like getting into like fight and flight type situations. You know, a lot of times people just want to cut, they want to fight, they want to, you know, dig their heels in the sand and be very firm on this stuff and be very black and right around it. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if you could take a moment to pause, walk away? take a day and then respond, right? It doesn't need to be this quick action response to things. And I know that we are influenced so heavily by our online world, right? And things that people say, and we have to be aware of that, right? We can be caught up into our own echo chambers of thoughts and beliefs, and that limits 
um, different ideas to come through, right? Like we want to be open to hearing others' points of views. We really do because that makes a better society for everybody. And so I'm encouraging you all to be open, listen, and really work on expanding your own discomfort. And that's just looking at how to process your feelings. You're going to get triggered by something, right? It feels very triggering right now for a lot of people around the political race. And my invitation to you on that is to take our environment right now in America and use it to learn how to feel your feelings. Like, what are you feeling? Are you angry? Are you scared? Are you worried? Like, name how you feel about it, okay? Journal about it. Get coaching about it. Share with, you know, a therapist, a loved one, a friend, like how you are feeling about these things and get it out, right? And in a way that you can feel safe to do so. Anybody inside my coaching programs, I will coach you on all of this. It is a safe place to share how you feel about that. I am not judging anybody on their political beliefs or views at all. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you see how your thoughts and feelings are creating you to take actions in your life that may or may not be good for you, right? So my approach is always about you (laughs) and the outcomes of thinking in a very polarized way and how that is helping or hurting you. And we do that through awareness. We do that by looking at your own thoughts, getting aware of how you're thinking about things and and how that's creating feelings for you that is driving your actions. And I want to encourage you to, to find a space that you are able to share how you feel in some way, shape, or form, okay? And I really want to encourage our society as a whole to be open, to have more empathy around things. We don't have to be canceled. We don't have to get upset about this stuff. So we want to promote active listening and empathy, okay? So think about how that's happening in the environments that you're in, at church, at school, at home. And then we just want to, again, normalize the discomfort, Okay. Encourage conversations. Be open to just listening without responding. Really try to listen instead of trying to think about what you're going to say in response to the things that they're saying. Like hear that person, ask them questions. Okay. And then maybe you just sit with that knowing for a little bit, and then you can come back and you can continue the conversations. Okay. You want to be open to having a tolerance and encourage critical thinking. We, I teach that here, right? We are critically thinking about our relationship with alcohol. We are evaluating at all angles about our lives, what we're doing in our lives that is creating stress, any external factors in our lives that um, are creating feelings that we're numbing out with alcohol. We are definitely learning how to critically think about things in this space, right? In my coaching programs, in this podcast. And so I know sometimes when you start to learn these skills, you want to other people to learn them too. So again, be open, be slow. Just because you think it doesn't mean that it's a fact. It's, and and that goes for me too. I very, I believe strongly in a lot of different things. And just because I believe very strongly, it doesn't mean that that is a 100% fact, right? I can be very convincing, (laughs) right? I can be very convincing in things and it can feel like that is 100% a fact. But remember that these are my opinions, right? And you get to decipher through that and come up with your own opinions. And that's a beautiful thing. So we want to celebrate the diversity of thought. We really do. We don't all need to think the same thing. We're, you know, that's where, um, cultures can get into trouble, right? And we're going to be less creative if we all think the same things. Um, we're not, if we all think the same things, we are less likely to share new ideas and thoughts. And so we're not fostering creativity or diversity. We want to have a difference of opinions. I promise you. Okay. So be open. We can celebrate (laughs) our different beliefs and values and be respectful And when we do that, then we have a strong connected community where we can work through issues better, right? We can hear each other more. We can come up with better solutions on things. But when we're so divisive around certain topics, nobody's getting anywhere. 
And so I want to invite you to really think about that. Love wins, right? (laughs) Hate separates. All of that stuff is true. When you can be in a relationship with somebody and respectfully disagree, it's a beautiful thing. You can work through disagreements together. You can um, get along better. You can feel better. And ultimately, when you do these things, you have a better quality of life. And so does our society. And then we're not seeing some of the terrible things that we do see, like mass shootings and terrible toxic divorces and alcoholism and all of the things that come from um, mental, you know, like mental health issues. We want to bring people in. We want to do it with love. So we want to slow down. We want to pump the brakes. We want to learn how to be with our difficult feelings when other people present difference of ideas and thoughts. Okay. So take a breath, name how you feel, stop, notice and process, notice where you feel that in your body and really let yourself be with that feeling before you react. You want to intercept the automatic action that comes from that, right? It's just like when you have an urge to drink, you have that quick action urge that you want to drink alcohol, right? And the, and the way to fix that is to stop, notice and process, right? You're stopping that automatic behavior. And I think that if we could all just slow down and think through things and process our feelings and have more agency over what we do in response to our feelings, the world would be a much more peaceful and loving place. So I'd love to hear from you on this. If you're practicing this in real time, if this opened up your mind to think about things differently, um, let's keep this conversation going, okay? Be vulnerable. One of the things that I have practiced ever since learning about life coaching tools is letting go that I might piss somebody off. Now, you might listen to this podcast and never want to listen to another one of my podcasts again. And I have to be willing to take that risk for my own well-being, right? I can't control, and neither can you, we cannot control how other people think and feel. Everybody is going to have their thoughts and feelings based on who they are and the cultures that they live in, how they were raised, and a bunch of different factors, okay? It's so important for you to know your own thoughts and feelings on things and feel comfortable sharing that and letting go of what is going to happen on the other side of it. That's just vulnerability, right? I'm sharing a part of me right now and you can see me, you can hear me, you can accept me and I can't control if it doesn't look like that, right? We have to let go of the control of that. That's what keeps people small. That's what keeps people down. And we don't need that right now. We need to be open and honest and share how we think and feel with love, with the pause, right? After we're um, (laughs) a little bit more neutralized in our feelings, right? But we want to foster that and being authentic. I want you guys to know me. I want to know you. And when we know each other, as our true selves, our best selves, we can help each other so much more. Okay. I love you all very much. I hope you listen to this podcast over and over again. I hope you do your own research. If there's other things that you want to hear about, know about around feelings, expanding your discomfort that helps you bridge connection. I would love to hear those ideas from you. Remember when you are more comfortable with your own feelings, and you can allow other people to have their own feelings and thoughts, you will have a better quality of life. So don't worry about the other person. Think about what's what's in it for you, (laughs) okay? Be selfish here. When you are more open and have more empathy, that feels better than feeling anger and hate, yeah? So we got to think about how that's going to benefit us. We're motivated by seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, and saving energy. So use that motivational triad to our benefit here and be selfish and be like, if I'm open and I can really understand and feel empathy versus hate or anger or rage, that's going to help me because I'll feel better. And when you feel better, you do better. You drink less. You can stay in your own lane more. You can do what's important to you better and take care of yourself a lot better too. All right, my friends, I love you and we'll talk to you next week. I want you to check out AngelaMasonic.com forward slash Alive AF. 
You know what it's like to have a desire to cut back on your drinking, right? You start to read books, listen to podcasts, try things, but you might not be able to yet put all the pieces and suggestions together in a way that actually makes sense and works for you. You might struggle with beating yourself up after an overdrink. You might get frustrated with yourself when you take two steps forward and then another two steps back and get overwhelmed with what's right and wrong about your relationship with alcohol. Your friends tell you that you should be able to have just one drink and it isn't a big deal. You might be white knuckling through urges and resisting instead of peacefully processing them. And you might struggle with your identity as someone who has enjoyed having a lot of wine or alcohol in your life. It's around you all the time. It's what you do and who you are. Well, after five years of successfully coaching hundreds of women through these struggles, I have created the Alive AF membership where women like you can learn the basics on what it takes to cut back and reach your goals with alcohol, whether it is to just drink less or totally quit. And when you join, you will get the exact framework I used to change my own relationship with alcohol and still use today that has led me to be alcohol free for over five years. You're going to get access to my resources, videos, and worksheets that have been proven to change and reduce how much you drink. Every day you can ask questions, share your obstacles, and get coaching and direct support on the challenges you will face with love and no judgment. Also, you will get immediate access to workshops like uncovering your alcohol identity and changing it, how to say no to things that don't support your new identity or life or goals, aka boundaries. (laughs) a workshop called Creating Emotional Agency, and another one, How to Manage Your Mind to Succeed at Your Goals and More. Every month we have a brand new workshop. These workshops are filled with step-by-step prompts and instruction to help you create the exact relationship with alcohol that is best for you. My mission and vision for Alive AF is to be a hub of support and resources for women to come and learn how to do what is best for them and becoming more alive in the process. When you join, you're going to learn how to take care of yourself better, how to feel good and become more alive and go after the life that you really want. I want this membership to be affordable and an easy solution where you can get all the help you need in one simple place whenever you need it. So no need to go read another book, find a new podcast, attend a free webinar, or go down the path of piecemealing it all together. Join Alive AF and have it all there in one place for you anytime you need it. So go to angelamasenic.com forward slash Alive AF and enrollment is open right now. See you inside.